Welcome to part 3 of the audio visualization in Unity tutorial by PeerPlay. In the previous part we have made the audio peer class in which we get the data of the audio spectrum. In this part we will visualize the sample results. So let me first get head over to the script that we made and the public float, I'd like to make that a static float um, so I can access it from any other script. Save it and go back to Unity. Now we want to visualize these samples of 512 samples that we get into the uh, get spectrum data. So to do this, the easiest way is to make a lot of cubes, uh, 512 cubes to be exact, and to make them um, change in their scale uh, towards the number of um, the sample that they are. So let's start by creating a new script. C sharp script and we'll call this instantiate 512 cubes there you go and let's also add a new empty game object and we will call this instantiate cubes Now let's set its position to zero, zero, zero. And I'll put the script on to this object. And from this object out of, we want to instantiate all around the object, um, these 512 parametric equalizing cubes. So that's what we're going to script right now. So the first thing we need is a public game object because we need a prefab to instantiate so this is all pretty straightforward uh, we'll call this uh, sample cube prefab and as we want to talk to 512 of these cubes we need to store them into an array of game objects so let's make a private game object it's an array uh, and we'll call this sample cube and it's new game object and it has 512 length. Let's have a look into Unity at the instantiation script. We need to select the prefab um, which is the parametric cube and if we look at the object here, I will put it into the scene so we can look at it. This is a cube that I've made that scales only upwards. So what this will do is these cubes will all be instantiated. So a lot of these cubes will be size each other and they will all scale up and downwards to um, the variables that will come in by the get spectrum data. So these we are going to instantiate. So back over into our script of the instantiate 512 cubes, we will start with a for loop of a length of 512. So for int i is 0, i is smaller than 512, we'll put it plus. And we will instantiate a, a game object. So let's say game object, and we'll call this the instance of sample cube is casted to a game object instantiate. And what object are we going to instantiate? The prefab. So the instance of its transform that its position should be this dot transform dot position. This makes the cube sit in the center uh, of the object from which we are going to spawn it at first. Um, and the next thing we want to do is we want to make it a child of the object on which this 
class is running. So instance sample cube dot its transform dot parent is transform. This dot transform. Now let's also change the name of every instance. It's also always a good thing to do. Or at least I like to do this. Sample cube plus the number. I would like to create a circle of cubes. So what we need to know is in its 360 degrees round, uh, how much it has to move every time because we have 512 cubes so for that we have got a calculator and we can say 360 divided by 512 is 0 0.703125 so we can use that number in uh, every time we want to do its transform dot its uter angles and we will rotate it a little bit so Let's say it's uh, zero, um, and then the number that we've got there, and I'll make it uh, minus, so it's going into the correct direction, um, which is multiplied by its index, and this will also rotate into zero, and then we have to place the different uh, instance sample cubes into a certain distance so uh, we will say the instance sample cube dot its transform dot its position uh, would be a vector th 3 dot forward um, times a certain uh, amount we'll say place it 100 now we still have to uh, set the sample cube um, objects in the list so we can use it to talk to it in the update so let's say that sample cube index is this instance sample cube so now we'll loop through all these 512 and we will set all these cubes to the correct position into the array and now in the update we want to talk to sample cube so let's create a for loop here um, it's just about the same as the one in start if this one is smaller than 512 plus plus and uh, we will say here just to make sure that it's going correctly if sample cube is not null always good to do these checks there to not run into problems then sample cube um, index number dot its transform dot its local scale now we're going to set the scale to the samples of the audio pair. So we'll say new vector 3 is, uh, let's make it scale 10, 10, 10, but we want to change it into its y into the vertical direction. And let's say here audio pair that we created, we're going to talk to audio pair dot it samples and that's why I made a public static float so I can just reach it from here and we want to talk to the index and the numbers into samples can be really really small so we can't really see what is happening so I'd like to make a, in a float here of maximum scale so let's add here a public float and call this max scale and place it into the equation um, into brackets and we'll have a starting size of 2 and that's the complete code 
So let's uh, save the script and go over to Unity. And the max scale we have to set it to a higher number, so I'll put it to about 1000. And in our audio pair I'll select a song to play. And now we can see the result of what we've just made. So you can see that it's working, uh, it does get the spectrum values and in the lower frequencies you can see really some result but in higher frequencies you can't see a lot happening because the bass is actually really present in only a few of these bars here uh, and the higher frequencies are having a way wider spectrum so the values here are very low so let me increase the maximum scale to about 100 times higher so we can see something happening even in the higher spectrum. So here you can see that the uh, values get lower and lower over the spectrum and this is not something we can really use in our game so in the next part we will divide all these different segments over into a um, good gradual um, bars so we will make about eight bars so bar one will go from this to this point and the next bar will have a little bit more of space to cover and the last bar of the eight will actually cover ob about half of the circle so um, you will get values that you can really use in your game so thank you for watching this tutorial uh, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next part